don't you just hate moving parts? I mean, we all went into electronic design for a reason, right? And admit it, part of the reason might have been that we just don't like mechanical things crunching and grinding together, making noise and wearing out and getting all gooky and gunky. And still, in electronics, we sometimes end up with mechanical things anyway, like clunky push buttons or potentiometers with their slighty, scrappy things just waiting to collect dust and mess up our design. Wouldn't it be cool if we had a better, more reliable, more electronic way to do that stuff? Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today, my guest is Anjana Govil from Texas Instruments, and we're going to talk about inductive sensing with inductance to digital converters and how it will help us get rid of all that scratchy, clunky stuff. Before we get started, remember to click that link. There you can find out even more information about inductance to digital converters. Welcome, Anjana. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Emilio. So a lot of people haven't heard of inductive sensing. Now, what is it and how does it work? Inductive sensing is a completely new way of doing position and rotation sensing. Inductance to digital converters was a data converter category that TI invented in 2013, and we followed up lately with newer multi-channel parts. Today specifically, we are going to be discussing the use of inductive sensing for implementing keypads, buttons, and dials. Okay, cool. So this sounds like a pretty cool technology. How can I use it? Sure. Let me give you a quick overview of how inductive sensing works. Excellent. As you can see on the top of this slide, we have three implementations of using inductive sensing. The sensor in this case can be a wire wound sensor coil as shown in the figure one, a PCB based sensor coil as shown in the center figure, or a spring can be used as a sensor. The cool thing about inductive sensing is that the sensor can be a very low cost sensing element that's usually easily implemented inside the system. The target for inductive sensing in the first two cases has to be a conductive target. That again, in a lot of systems, is already present as a part of the system design. Right. So some of the big benefits of inductive sensing versus other position and angle sensing technologies that are present is it does not require magnets. It is extremely reliable by virtue of being contactless, so no wear and tear over lifetime. Uh -huh. It's completely insensitive to environmental contaminants like dust and dirt, which makes it really relevant for industrial applications, home appliances, and it can achieve submicron resolution. We'll talk about this later, but we can measure up to a few microns of distance with some of the highest resolution parts we've released recently. Cool, okay. Last but not the least, electronics can be located remotely from the sensor, so it allows for a very flexible system design. Very cool, okay. So how is this actually used? Yes, there are so many use cases for inductive sensing. On this slide, you can see some of the possible use cases. The first diagram shows the use of inductive sensing for measuring axial position measurement. Okay. So you see the red colored target, which is a conductor that moves axially against the sensing coil, which is the sensor element. Yeah. Now, if you flip that the other way around, you can move asymmetric target over a coil to do linear position sensing. Mm. What you need to make sure is you're moving the target at a constant height at the sensor. Right. Or you can have an asymmetric coil and move a fixed target to again detect linear position. Okay. Then you have this application in angular position sensing where you have this helical shaped target that moves over the sensor coils on a PCB. Ah, okay. Now, beyond that, there's a lot of other ones. You can do event counting, you can do spring compression measurements, you can do metal identification. I mean, it's really revolutionary in the amount of different use cases it can be put to. Very cool. So I think I get this conceptually, but do you have any specific examples you could give me? Yeah, sure. Let's talk about some of them. So the first example I'm going to talk about is a touch-on-metal-based button reference design. Okay. So this reference design uses our newest multiple channel high resolution LDC 1614 family. And you can see how the button case looks like on this slide. Yeah. So the principle in how this works is you have the sensor coil mounted on the bottom of the PCB and the metal case on the top. When no one is touching the metal case, 
the metal cage case remains flat and there is no deflection. Now, whenever someone presses the button, the metal deflects slightly and inductive sensing measures the deflection in the metal. The amount of deflection could be a few microns to tens of microns and that depends on the type of metal, the thickness of the metal, the size of the sensor and so on. But the cool thing is that we are able to detect really small deflections using the new LDC family. That's cool. So it's actually measuring the deflection of the metal on the case. I love that. So Anjana, what are some of the advantages in using inductive sensing here versus, you know, push buttons or other options? Glad you asked that. There's several advantages to using inductive sensing for touch on metal buttons. One of the biggest ones is its high sensitivity. What that means is, I mean, literally you can measure a few grams on top of it to tens of grams. So it's extremely sensitive and it's programmable whether you want to detect the touches on the different thresholds you program them to. Ah, okay. The other cool thing is that where some of the other technologies can be fooled by unintentional touches, Mm -hmm. inductive sensing only responds to intentional button touches. Also, you can use one continuous sheet of metal that can be sealed against water, oil, or dirt, which is great in industrial applications like factory automation, HMIs, and so on. It also works with gloves, again, which is a huge value in these applications. Nice. No no fingerless gloves or anything. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then, obviously, it's highly reliable, again, because there's no moving parts in the system. Right. There's a lot of applications for touch and metal buttons from consumer applications like keyboards and laptops to mobile devices to industrial HMIs that we talked about. I mean, the possibilities are endless. Okay, so if I actually want to use one of these, uh, what do I need? Sure, you just go to ti.com and search for the reference design for this particular solution. So you search for TIDA00314 on ti.com where we have the reference design with all the design guide, all the design files, schematics, bombs, and everything you need to get your design started. Very cool. Okay, so you got some other examples for me? Yeah, sure. Let's scale the buttons to a keypad. A lot of existing technologies in the market use electrical contacts for implementing keypads. Mm -hmm. Using inductive sensing, again, you can do a contactless implementation for a keypad as shown in this particular reference design. So again, the great thing about implementing a keypad with inductive sensing is that it's robust against dust and dirt, makes it very reliable in dirty environments. Yeah. It's long lasting because of the robustness that decreases product maintenance costs and reduces replacement costs. It's very easy to design with our reference design that we put out, and it can be scaled all the way to 64 keys with one LDC 1314, which is a four channel part. So with multiple such parts, you can make as complex a system as you'd like to. Very cool. So if I want to use this one, what do I need? Go to ti.com and search for TIDA-00509, and we have all the information on how to use this to design a keypad system. There's a lot of different applications for keypads in industrial market, especially for harsh environments where the seal structure is very beneficial. Ah. It has a lot of uses in automotive buttons, as well as a lot of white goods of customers who'd like to use it in their systems. Sure. Okay, so both of these examples have been about Axial, but you also said this can do rotation sensing, is that right? Yeah, yeah. This is a great solution for rotation sensing. In fact, the next design we're going to talk about showcases its implementation for designing a one-degree accuracy dial with the new inductive sensing products. On the slide here is an image of what the solution looks like. Okay. Again, some of the key benefits of this solution, very similar to what we discussed earlier, its robustness to dust and dirt. This one is extremely high resolution and accuracy. A lot of competing solutions in the market are unable to achieve one degree accuracy on the dials. It's Mm -hmm. very easy to design with our reference design. And again, long lasting because of the contactless nature of this technology. Nice. There's a lot of applications, again, wherever there is a knob or the need for a rotational encoder, there is a potential to evaluate this technology for that application. Okay, so I think I could think of a lot of applications where I'd want to use one of these versus another solution. So tell me about the reference design here. 
Sure. So the reference design here is TIDA-00508. Now this particular reference design uses the LDC-1314 along with an MSP430 from TI and four coils along with the asymmetric helical target. On the bottom side, you can see the hardware that's available for this design and the GUI that shows the absolute position of the dial once this design is hooked up. So there must be a whole bunch of applications where this technology could be used, right? Oh yes, I mean, there is a ton of applications where we've seen a lot of interest. Some of the biggest areas where we are seeing interest is in industrial and white goods applications like washers, dryers, refrigerators, again for implementing buttons, keypads, or dials. Consumer is, is a big market for it, uh, where we're seeing interest in keypads, dials, and then automotive. That's another emerging area where we see a lot of interest. These can be used in any other applications where there is a need for reliable, contactless buttons, keypads, and dials. For instance, flow meters, electronic point of sale. I mean, there's sure. the possibilities are endless. Yeah, I, I can imagine. So I think I'm ready to get started. Uh, where should I go for more information? Sure, you just go to ti.com slash LDC. So on that particular page, you'll find all the details for the reference designs that we just discussed. We have an E2E forum where you can find support and into any questions you have. We have a Webbench designer tool that helps you design the sensor and get started with the system design, as well as you can order the evaluation modules for some of the newest products that we've released from this website. Excellent. This was super cool. Thank you so much for joining me today, Anjana. Thank you so much for having me. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> Good. Before we go, don't forget to click that link. There you can download even more information about inductance to digital converters. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton. For more Chalk Talks, check out the on-demand section of eejournal.com or eejournal's YouTube channel. <laughs>